What is up everybody? Dan Dan the Fireman here. We're going to talk about the common types of injuries in motorcycle accidents. Now once again, just like every other YouTube channel, if you like people's content, please click that subscribe button and then click that notification bell button because I guess subscriptions don't really mean anything unless you actually have that notification bell button. All right, let's jump into it. So neck and head injuries are number one. Okay, this is the one that, that I, I get on a soapbox for. I get on a soapbox for a lot of things, but this is the one. Okay, you're gonna get a traumatic brain injury if you don't wear a helmet. You're gonna get a traumatic, you might get a traumatic brain injury if you do wear a helmet. You notice how you can never really get rid of all of that? Now, what a traumatic brain injury is, it can range from the smallest of the smallest of concussions to a complete trauma to where your brain is spilled out on the ground, okay? So traumatic brain injury covers everything. You can have a broken bone, which is a hairline fracture, or you can have a bone that's just shot up and shattered everywhere. It's, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, the only way really to minimize and mitigate a lot of the, the damaging effects of a traumatic brain injury and a neck and head injury Wear a helmet. Wear a helmet. Wear a certified, very good helmet. Uh, I highly recommend at minimum ECE. DOT, if that's all you can get, but here's the thing, you can get some really good helmets that are Snell rated, ECE rated for like 120, 150 bucks, if that. I think Scorpion makes some really good ones and HJC makes some really good, highly rated helmets. And that is how you're gonna protect yourself uh, for the most part from a head and neck injury. Now, traumatic brain injury, that's not the only thing. Let's say you crash and, oh, we'll, we'll jump into this. All right, so broken bones. Okay, broken bones. I've seen this one. I've seen the traumatic brain injury one also, but broken bones, that could be anything. Remember, we got like 200, I think 206 bones. Forgive me, I've, I haven't practiced as an EMT in about a year now, so I don't, whatever. About 200 bones, you can get like a ton of broken bones, okay? You get long bone injuries, like your mid femur fracture type stuff where you can lose a lot of blood flow, you can lose a lot of blood, and you can bleed out easily by breaking your, your femur. Um, you can break your humerus, radius ulna, your tib fib, you can break your fingers, your hands, your, your spine. Oh man, and it's not just the, you know, the spinal process, it's the little, little dinosaur thingies you have on the back. No, 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 it's, I'm talking about completely separating your spine, and then now your spinal cord is completely damaged. And we're gonna talk about nerve injuries, but guys, the only real way to to once again mitigate that is with gear. Here's the pattern that you're starting to see. Mitigation with gear. So all gear all the time, wear a helmet for the head injuries and the skull. Skull is still a bone. Your facial injuries are, or facial bones are still bones. I'm gonna turn right up here. And get some armor. So impact absorption armor. So getting some shoulder armor, elbow, or elbow shoulder armor, <laughs> hip armor, knee armor, back armor. And some places even have chest armor. I'm actually looking for stuff. So if you have anything and you know of any places that have chest armor uh, jackets, um, I would definitely like to hear about it in the comments. So that is kind of how you help mitigate a lot of those issues is by having armor. Arm, hand, and finger injuries. So if I trip you, what are you gonna put out first? Your face or your hands? You're probably gonna put out your hands. You're gonna try to protect your face. You're gonna try to protect your vital organs and it's just a natural reflex. Put your hands out. What happens when you put your hands out when you crash going 40 miles an hour? You're gonna have hand and arm injuries, right? So I talked about broken bones, like the long bones, like in the legs. Now we're gonna kind of talk a little bit more up upper body type stuff. And I see this a lot. Uh, I see a lot of dislocations. I've seen, uh, I've seen actual arms just like shattered. And what that does is it, like their arm is like behind their back. And it's like, it's like Peter from Family Guy. It, it, seriously, that's what it looks like. And it's terrible. So what happens is that when you land on your hand and you break the bones in your hands, let's say you have to work. Like, like, you, like you're doing this for a hobby, right? Or maybe you're doing it for commuting, who knows? But now you gotta go to work. What's if you have two broken hands? Do you have enough sick time? Do you have enough, do you, is your job that secure to where you could do that? What's up buddy, be safe. So this is why you need to have armor. <laughs> <laughs> now, a lot of the times you're not going to really prevent the actual breaking of the bones because hands are pretty brittle when it comes to the majority of things. And uh, you're still probably going to break your, your bones and everything, but it could be the difference between a hairline fracture, a very bad bruised bone, or a completely shattered fingers, possibly uh, amputated fingers because they got ran over or something like that. But some, most gloves, some gloves actually, just, let me take that back, some gloves they offer D30 protection in here, and D30 is a type of armor. 
same thing with knuckle protection. And then when I talk about also the upper arm injuries, I also talk about, you know, the, the elbow protection. So when you land, you possibly hit your elbow, but the armor will absorb some of the impact. So hopefully, hopefully, depending on the style and the mechanism of injury, you're going to have just uh, the absorption of the impact, not the full on uh, body taking the absorption, which will possibly shatter or break your bones. Um, and also remember when you land, if you're landing and you, and you lock up or even just whatever freak accident kind of crap because you're you're a victim of physics you're a prisoner of physics you land straight down that impact goes all the way up your arm and could possibly blow your shoulder out it could possibly break your clavicle it could it could sh send that shock wave and break bones just going up maybe your hands fine but now you have a broken humerus I'm not trying to scare you from riding but I want you to understand the risks okay I want you to understand the risks soft tissue injuries I'm gonna turn into here geez it is windy Holy crap. Soft tissue injuries. Um, this could be anything and everything that is not bone, uh, nerves, and like, yeah. So this is pretty much everything. So we're talking road rash. We're talking internal injuries. So the stuff that you don't really think about too much. So internal injuries, the road rash, uh, what else? Your eyeballs. So if you're not wearing a helmet, you get something in your eyeballs. Uh, but yeah, it, internal injuries. And remember, all these things are multi-system trauma type stuff when it comes to a motorcycle accident so let's say you crash and you break a bone okay we talked about broken bones but it's a rib bone so now that rib bone punctures your lung which is a soft tissue so now you have a broken bone and soft tissue injury you see how what I'm getting at where it's all multi-system so let's say you have a, a punctured lung or uh, let's say you crash but then you hit your chest or you hit your pelvis or you hit something on your handlebars or it hits the the vehicle that hit you or whatever it is um, so there's a bunch of debris in the road. I gotta be careful on that. That soft tissue injury, you could have internal bleeding. The doctor said all my bleeding was internal. That's where the blood's supposed to be. These are all things that you need to be aware of. And one thing that you can really do to prevent that, or at least once again, mitigate it. You can't really prevent a lot of these things. You can only mitigate and reduce the risk of it is by taking a class. Um, this way you'll be taught what to look out for. This way you'll be taught you know, how to hopefully avoid the situations altogether and if need be in an emergency situation, how to handle it. That's the whole point of the class. And it's very important you take a class. And if you don't take it with me at Ride Arizona MTC, that's perfectly fine. I just want you to take a class, okay? Neurological issues uh, can arise. And remember what I said, multi-system trauma. So let's, let's take that example once again, uh, crashing, you break uh, a rib, so that's a bone. Then you puncture a lung, which is soft tissue injury. Now it's, now it's a multi-system trauma. But let's say that, that rib also punctured uh, certain uh, nerves inside your chest, or now you have nerve damage on your chest. Now you have like no feeling right here, or you cause it to where your muscle tissue can't contract anymore. There, I know a lot of people out there that have you know, like dead limbs. Now that's one thing that's called a uh, biker's arm. So when people put their hand out to stop themselves from crashing, you know, they fly off and they put their hands out. They have broken bones, soft tissue injuries, but now their arm has a loss of sensation. And sometimes their arm just hangs down from forever now. It's, it has no feeling. Um, so neurological issues can be an issue. Neurological issues can be an issue. Neuropathy, uh, that's, that's an issue that diabetics have. And go ahead, I'm letting you go. It's a four-way stop, so it's my turn. But this is something that you can have. So let's say you get uh, an impact injury to your legs while you're riding. So you get T-bone, boom, hitting the leg. Now you have less movement of this leg, not because you broke the bones. That healed, uh, soft tissue injury healed. But now your nerves themselves got separated. So now you have less mobility in that leg. Once again, best way to mitigate that, taking a class, wearing proper gear. So. The neurological, when you, if you hit your elbow super hard, hopefully the, the armor will pick up the impact. Hopefully your shoulder will pick up the impact, the shoulder armor. Hopefully your, your helmet will pick up most of the impact to where you don't have that. And remember, it can also happen to your face. You hit your face without a helmet, you could have neurological issues to where it almost looks like you have a stroke. Uh, you could have deadening, deadening of the, uh, the nerves in your face. You gotta watch out for that. I think this thing died. Stupid batteries. We'll just go off of this thing. All right, disfigurement. Good thing this is uh, this is actually the last one. So disfigurement, uh, amputations, man. If you get hit, in, you get hit in the leg, possibly get an amputation. 
possibly have to, to, to remove that leg and it's gonna be a little bit harder to ride. You could still ride with amputated uh, limbs, it's just gonna be a little bit harder now. Um, you're gonna have to get like uh, fixtures, so let's say you have a amputated left arm, you can actually get your clutch um, to, your, to your right side. There's a bunch of different stuff, and that's a whole different video that I wanna do. But you can get amputations and then facial trauma. So let's say you don't wear a helmet, and you have a beautiful, beautiful face. Let's say you have a really pretty face. Uh, facial trauma. It could completely change your outlook on life. It could completely change your the rest of your life. And just because you decide not to wear a helmet. Once again, to mitigate that, classes protective gear. I'm all pointing here thinking this thing's playing. Protective gear. Okay, it's very, 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 very important. Don't know what this person's doing. Uh, the amputations thing, that is just a risk that we take. Uh, armor sometimes, uh, the gear sometimes just won't. It won't, it won't help you. I mean, it's just the way it is. But it can help if, if, if possibly you have like big boots like this and instead of losing my ankle in a crash, my boots will protect me. Does that make sense? So it, that's why I wear these big boots because I like keeping my feet on my body. But those are some of the common injuries. Hope you guys liked it. Don't be scared to ride, but be, please, please, please be safe. All right? All right, I'll see you guys later.